Hey there, puzzlers. My name is Fleb, and today I'm going to be covering a wonderful puzzle from Dash 9. Now that name Dash 9 might sound familiar, because last week I also covered a puzzle from Dash 9. If you recall that video, I talked about how all the puzzles build off of each other. This one builds off of that puzzle, so it actually uses these same six pieces that were in that puzzle before. But what it introduces are three new pieces. Now the first puzzle was about decoding these different symbols and eventually spelling out phrases. And this one says, well, we sent this phrase to somebody. Doesn't, the story doesn't matter that much. But it turns out that we were missing these three pieces to begin with. So we're not exactly sure if we sent the right phrase or not. So here are some other translations that we know, and what do we actually send? So the important things to take away from the previous puzzle is that we have these puzzle pieces, they have these symbols, and they correspond to letters, and there are clues that looked a lot like these as well. Uh, it might be a little hard to see on the camera, but just a sentence with an underlined phrase at the end. I'll zoom into them a little bit later. And when we had those sentences, the underlined part was a definition, sort of like a crossword clue. All right, without further ado, let's get started. So to solve this puzzle, it makes a lot of sense to start with this sheet. We're going to put aside these pieces for now. We have a series of symbols over here, and then a series of crossword clues underlined over here. And some of these are more straightforward than others. For example, eight letters before iota is alpha. And if you look over here, we have five symbols that correspond to what's hopefully that answer. The first and last letters of alpha are the same and so are the symbols here. There are five symbols and five letters. So it's not that big of a leap to say this might correspond to A, L, P, H, and then the last symbol is also an A. Well, if that were the case, what would that give us? That would be an H. That would be an A. Here, I've just taken the time and filled in the symbols with their corresponding letter. Now, to go from here, you have to start getting some more of these clues. For instance, the next one that I got was scheduled for a meeting, which was agenda. And with a P blank A and lost large celestial body, this made sense to me to be planet. And now you see we have a problem. We need to fit one, two, three, four, five letters with three symbols here, and we need to fit one, two, three, four symbols for three symbols here. It must be that some of the symbols correspond to two letters. Well, let's start with planet. If that's an L, which it, I should have filled in actually, then this would be an N-E and a T, or an N and an E-T. I would guess that this last symbol is a single letter because all of the other symbols that have the same top and bottom are just a single letter. So I think that's a good guess for now. Similarly, we can fill in agenda with two letters here, two letters here, and one letter there, because it has the same symbol on the top and bottom. That would be a D. And let's see if this gets us anything more. Now we have quite a bit on this clue, like a used car, which is pre-owned. We have a number of letters up here for opposing. That must mean against. And now we have enough of the crossword clues that we can start trying to figure out what we're doing with these extra pieces. We know we have symbols that correspond to letters. Some correspond to one letter, some correspond to two. And we have these original tiles which have a bunch of letters filled in on them. It would be nice if we could form a new dictionary from these pieces, sort of like we had in the first puzzle, where we could find a way to read the answers off of whatever we assembled from this. So let's give that a shot. How would we form something like this A, for instance? <clears throat> well, we'd need a piece that has that symbol without a letter that's only on these smaller pieces here. So this is the only one. And then we need one of these pieces which has a symbol here. And if you put these together, now you have that symbol corresponding to A. That's very nice. Let's see if we can figure out the rest of alpha. Can we find the piece that has to go here? The L? That's right there. That P is going to correspond to a shark fin here. 
and this piece, the H is going to come off of this piece here. And now we've put together enough pieces that we actually have A, L, P, H, and A. That's great. How can we go further? What if we wanted to get something like this simple, which is a crown with a little upside down triangle? Well, A, G would be these two here, but they're not currently touching. That's odd. But you could make them touch if you take the puzzle and move it up into three dimensions. The puzzle actually clues this step in the flavor text. Let's see if we can keep this going. What other symbols do we know? Well, we know that D is a single letter, so that has to go there. We have an any symbol like this and an en symbol like that which makes sense if you're considering two-letter pairs. If you flip the symbols upside down, you take the letters in a different order. That E would be here. And if we think we know what we're doing, then this should fold up into a three-dimensional structure as well. What's more is that now that we have these two halves, we know that P is formed by those two shark fins. So these two should fit together as well, making an even larger three-dimensional structure. And now we have two more pieces to place in, but we have this T still to place for the single symbol. So this one must go here, and the other one must go on the other side. And with that, you have a new dictionary. Let's see if we can use it to read some of these phrases. This symbol here is found on this corner, and it's ST. So this would be, so this would be STATS, or STATS, which is numerical data for short. An announcer. Well, let's try to find these two symbols. Here's the first one, ER. And here's the second one, LD. Herald. A herald is an announcer. At this point, you don't need to get the rest of the clues. All you need to do is translate what's left over here. Using our dictionary and going through this, this is H A. S-T-E-N, or hasten, which is the answer to the first part of this puzzle. I say the first part because you could have gotten these particular glyphs here and gotten the answer to this without actually constructing this crystal-like dictionary. Because this hunt was run with an app called Clue Keeper, what they actually did is when you entered that answer, it gave you another two sets of glyphs that you had to translate, both of which involved many symbols that weren't found on here. During the actual hunt, my team got this without actually constructing this fully. But then when we got to those two other phrases, we had to actually make this in order to fully solve the puzzle. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I think that what Dash did with these two puzzles in particular was really interesting, where you were starting to fill in the dictionary in a different way on the first puzzle, and then assembling it into a dictionary here. Puzzles like this are what it's all about. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like or subscribing, or following me on Twitter, at Flip Puzzles. Thank you once again, and as always, happy puzzling.